crisp Sunday morning. Hallelujah! Shout out to Yaakov Tari on the Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 11. 
about a lot of miracles that took place through the Bible. And in the New Testament, they remind us of some old things that took place where people had faith. Without faith, it's impossible to believe. That's a fact. So by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as of yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he helped him in like the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Yes. So Noah, by faith, yes, sir. began to do the work of God. Come now, on. Back in the book, we know that it says that Noah found grace. But that grace isn't what took Noah through the flood. No, it was his faith yes. to follow the word of God. Yes, look, sir. Look, 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 God told him to build an ark. Noah could have said, I don't have to build an ark. I'm saved by grace. Come on, but that man. grace had come at a moment in time to allow him to use that faith That's and that truth. obedience to be saved hey, from the flood. Come on, so at the man. time when he's being mocked because people are thinking that Noah's just doing things that aren't really necessary, you know, we've never seen this before. We've never had this rain and these floods. So what's wrong with Noah? They look at us sometimes and say, like, what's wrong with the church?
I, I pulled over there, my children were there, and I hadn't seen my kids in six months. And the mama had them down the next place where she's from. She said, well, I'm not going back. So I didn't, I didn't have vacation, so I went. We got hit by a hurricane. Anybody ever just, like, storms just pile up? When you're one on top of the other, you kind of kind of dig yourself out of it. Well, Benjamin, I kind of dug myself out of it. Come on now, but I didn't tell anybody I was going to Mexico. I think my mama was the only one. Come on now. Fly. Right there in Sinaloa, the Badlands of Mexico, the Sinaloa Cartel. And I rent a car and I'm driving through the desert. Whoa. Go see my kids. That was crazy. <laughs> That was crazy. Thank God God was with me. Amen. Amen. So I travel up. I go to his mom's little parents' house and that. I just walked up the steps. Nobody even knew I was in Mexico. I walked up the steps. Door was open. It's hot and that. I just walked in. Come on now. I was sitting there. Said, Dad! He hadn't seen me in six months. So I got to see my kids. And if the story stopped right there, that's a miracle in itself. Come on now. That's a miracle in itself. Right. I would have killed in that desert just trying to Cross through the heart of the cartel. It gets better. That's a fact. It does get better. It gets better. So I'm there for a couple days. Michael's a little kid, right? About nine years old, here and I. He said, I want to go home with you. I'm flying back. I got a round trip ticket. And so I said, so his mom actually said, well, hey, there's another miracle. little handheld 
moving a little bit walkie-talkie type thing back then. Hey, we had a kilometer or whatever. Oh, I think you're closer to my aunt. I'm about to call her. Michael said, let's pray again, Dad. I don't know. I think I'm praying, but I don't know. But I got a child with me. Thank God for the faith of a child. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the faith of a child. That's a true. So we all have that kind of faith nowadays. It's so, a fact. So as we were walking, we both looked up. Out of the sand of the desert comes this van pulling out that says taxi on the side of it. Oh, I thought I saw a garage for a second. <laughs> I was here. Let's get out of taxi. <coughs> so I do like this to the guy. He's about probably at this time he's about here to those back doors from me. Wow. And so he puts his window down and I said, Taxi? And he answered me in Spanish. See? Well, I'm telling in Spanish, we don't have any gas in the car. He said, No problem, hop in. So I don't know if we're being kidnapped or what at the moment, but I don't care. So we hopped in there, and so I asked, is there a gas station up the road? He said, no. Here I go again, wondering how God's going to work. So now, there's no gas station up the road, and I'm in a taxi. And I can't, I don't know where he's bringing me. I, don't even, I can't ask him. I can't really get that far in my sandwich. I ain't got a clue. Well, we pull up just a, an hour, like maybe a couple miles from the road. And he's a mechanic also, besides the taxi driver. Oh. And he's got a five gallon jug of gas. He brings oh. it I pay him for the gas, pay for the ride. It probably cost me about $40. I'd probably give him 400 Stuck in the desert at that time. <laughs> but right then and there, God provided something. Yeah. God provided a way. Well, I didn't think it was a way. Verse 
14 says, What does the prophet? My brother, though a man say he had faith and have not works, can faith save him? Come on now. A brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. And one of you saying to them, Depart in peace. Be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not these things which are needful to the body. What does the prophet? If they're starving to death and you say, hey, just go on, have some faith. But you don't give them what they need. Right. You don't give them a food. You don't give them water. You don't give them warm clothes. You don't help them out. How are we today doing that? When we run into people in this world that they have a need for what we have. And I'm not talking about the material things they fight at Walmart about. I'm talking about the things right here in the house. That's that's right. Right. They, they have a need. Oh, yeah. 
was day one. They're living in these crowds out there, which is one of the craziest things I've ever heard. The National Guard's being called out over violence. Yes, sir, they are. I don't know how the National Guard can fight a violence. Already in New York City. It's New York, Louisiana, there's about 10 states. Louisiana's one of them. Now, our government is hesitant to call out the National Guard over an enemy that's invaded. You know, and there's several. I mean, you can look at several different concepts of enemy, and one of them is, is a religious enemy that's been invaded. But they won't call out, but over a virus. That's a truth. You can't do it. The National Guard can't do anything for a virus. Right. I don't want to, you know, but it's happening, and it's for the people. You know, so we have, we have to be careful in this and not get that mindset of where we feel like an army can defeat something that we can't see. That's not it at all. This is it's a spiritual war. This is not this is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual war. war. That's true. We have to be We're ready. Like we have to be diligent. We have to be prepared. We have to be prayed up. I was praying right now. I was thinking, my God, uh, if I end up in a casket next week, am I prepared? Am I ready? I'm trying to do everything I can this week to be prepared. I'm trying to prepare my house and my family for the things that are going on the outside. But am I prepared at this moment to meet God with what I have in my back and my ways that are on top of you and my faith? Where's my faith? Because my faith has to be up there at a higher level than my fear of what's going on in this world. My faith has to be here. It's okay. Sometimes we tremble a little but get a hold of it. Push it down. Have some faith. Talk to God about it. God's not going to scare you. God's not going to sit in fear. God's not going to... If we don't have the spirit, When he took the honey and he put it 
on some blankets. They didn't go crazy and didn't know what to do. They went back right there with the honey. On the high. Right there with the honey. That's what we need. So right there with the to honey. Jesus. And milk and honey. Yeah. And milk, milk, milk and honey. Hallelujah. He's got a plan for us. We're in our course of our plan. Yes. We just need to keep that faith and keep our eyes on what God's got for us. That little work going back and forth, back and forth. Somebody tries to attack us, the enemy tries to attack us from the outside. Let's rise up. But when it's just carnal things going on that don't have anything to do with our works and our person and our wisdom, that back and forth just takes care of that. Something, something, something there. Time goes by a little while, and I 
God just hadn't quite done it to where I'm going there or I have a connection there. I just couldn't quite figure out what. But I didn't give up on it because I know God was speaking. That's a fact. Each and every one, I can almost guarantee you, everybody in this house, God has spoken to you about something that He's got planned for you. Right. Something that is going to, and our minds can't quite conceive it. That's a fact, brother. Because Bishop. we'll think that, you know, this is too great for me. You know, or, yeah, but I'm just simple me. How could this ever happen? And I, I, was, I kept just kind of ping ponging back and forth for that. Not me. I don't know anybody there. Well, I took a trip to Israel. When I got to Israel, we went through, toured everything, and, and, and had a good old time in Israel. And in the garden, I said, said, well, this looks like a good place to pray. Yes, sir. He did it. Jesus did it. He did it right here. So I said, well, we just kneeled down. There was a rock. I can, too. There was an olive tree, and there was a big stone. I guess it said about that high. Enough for you to... Lay your arms on like you had an altar. So I laid there and I, uh, I knelt at it and I prayed. God, I know you, you told me these things and I don't have to wait through it. I don't know the way. I, I've never been there. I don't, is that still your will? I, I just didn't know because I knew that God had spoke that to me, but I didn't know if that was still what God wanted me to do. So I get back to uh, the U.S. and that's how I met my wife. Because I was posting pictures of Israel. Yeah. We were Facebook friends before that had never communicated. And she communicated to me, oh, I enjoyed looking at the pictures. And so I communicated back. After a little while, this little bell goes, <laughs> And I prayed about something in the garden. Wow. And I said, oh, man, I, I, don't, I don't think so. You think? You, I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. Really? You tell but me. I was so blessed at that moment. You know, yeah. and we two or three years we communicated back and forth. So I tell brother to all be patient. Yeah, it comes. God, that's Believe me, it stories comes. all over the Bible where people waiting for that person and waiting, you know. And we did it. We were using college and God opens doors. I'm still working, and so yeah. All those, and then finally, when I stepped out, took the flight, and I stepped out of the plane and in the airport in Manila, I'm looking around, thinking, wow. You know, I know when I began this journey, this is what God told me that there, I'm going to eventually end up. And here I am. What the future holds, I don't know. You know whether the future's here working, the future's there working. You know, I don't know, but I know I'm a part right now helping the works in the Philippines. Yes, I know I'm a part of what God told me to do when I first began this journey, way back when He, before He filled me with the Holy Spirit. He spoke to me that in that service that you, you're going to be a part of something somewhere else. And at that time, I couldn't conceive it. I couldn't believe it. That's the truth. I couldn't really comprehend what God had for me in the future. Each and every one of us in here, God's got something for you. God's got something Amen. for you. He's going to provide a way. He's going to provide the opportunity. Way to go. Have faith. Here we are, going through this world, doing the work of God. 
We realize what's going to give us some power, and that's the power of holiness. We realize that God's given us something. He's given us a plan. Amen. We're to be witnesses. In the end, Revelation 20, verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne, yes. and him that sat on That's Jesus. from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, they ran away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Oh God. And the books were opened. Oh Jesus. Amen. The books were opened. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The books. The books Let our name be opened. And another book was opened. Which is the book of life. Yeah. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. According to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead That's which were true. Dead. And they were judged every man according to their works. My God. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second day. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the fire. Judged by their works. Yeah. Wait a second. I thought it was faith. And I thought it was grace. It's what you do in life. And I thought we found grace and we have faith. Now we've got the power to go do the works. Amen. And in the end, I have some title to go back. It says, saved by grace. Yes, sir. Judged by works. Come on. And so those that all say, yes, you have been saved by grace. Don't be lying. Because the number day you're going to be judged by works. God's given us all men. He's given us a gift that gives. He paid the price. Yeah. He said, He shed his blood. Hallelujah. He went to the cross. He went to the cross. He rose from the grave and sent it to heaven. And then sent his spirit down here to be in us. I'm not trying to be judgmental. I never want to be judgmental. Never. Any situation. No. This is an individual situation. Yes, sir. Each and every one of us, condemnation is, is going to be in our own. About this, therefore, no condemnation. That's a true. For those who are in Christ, you walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So we can't rely on that body that was in the earth. We have to rely on that spirit. Yeah. And in the judgmental, you know, God's on the mercy seat at the moment. Yes. He's on the mercy seat. He's sitting on the mercy seat. He's sitting on the seat of mercy. One day he's going to go back to the seat of judgment. Yeah. I don't want him to find me sitting there. No. Get up out of my seat because I, I don't oh, think the end is very good for me. If I got to get off of God's judgmental seat and then stand before it, I don't see a good ending in my account. But I'm happy to say that he's on the mercy. I'm not being judgmental. I know what I have to do. I Each and every one of us know what we have to do. We have a mandate from God to take up that, 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 that grace, hallelujah, and start doing a work. This can yeah. be full. This, the walls can be busted out.
It's not true. The Word of God says that God has meted out unto every man a measure of faith. Faith is just like muscles in your body. If you don't exercise them, they become weak. Remember as a kid, we were raised on a farm and I took my dad's axe and I went out in the woods and cut me a sapling and got me two five gallon buckets filled with full of sand and I said I'm going to make me a set of weights. I have a picture most of you probably have never heard of Charles Adams. I did. Yeah, Brother Don had, Brother Paul raised her. I used to put that picture of Charles Atlas up on there and then I'd go look in the mirror. I said, what's wrong with me? And he had bulges where I didn't even have places. And when I got to where I could pick up the two five gallon cans of, of sand on my tree limb, then I got the water hose and I filled the sand bucket up with water to make it, to make it even heavier. My dad had come by one day and saw me. So you want to build muscles? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, put them buckets away. He said, grab that chainsaw. We're going to the wood and cut firewood. When we got home, we dumped it all out there in a lane. And he said, now I'm going to get you a, a wedge and a, a hammer and a sledgehammer. And he said, get you an axe and start splitting wood. So that lift in their buckets ain't going to cut it. He said, if you're going to build a muscle, you're going to build it doing something yes, constructive. Amen. <laughs> and so I began to work on that. I never did get to look like Charles Adams. <laughs> but I tell you what, I got a great appreciation for work. Right. My dad was a firm believer if you didn't work, you didn't eat. Thank God for faith. Faith will take you where nothing else can take you. Faith moves mountains. Faith delivers people. And I am so thankful today for that faith that Brother Nessie was talking about. Today has been declared a day of prayer. Nationwide, it's been declared a day of prayer. The Lord said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. A lot of people have trouble praying because they don't know anything about humility. You have to humble yourself. I observe some of you praying. There's some of you with the gift of intercessory prayer on your lives. And you know that you have that. We, we have a condition going on in our country if it's as bad as they say it is. I'm not sure and I'm not even debating that. But I do know that God is able to heal anything. Yes. Amen. And when the people of God pray, right. said when the people of God pray, He said, if my people who bear my name will humble themselves and pray, and seek my face yes. and turn from their wicked ways. It's not doing you a bit of good to pray if you don't pray a prayer of repentance. God deliver me from these glitches in my life that, that cause me to fail you and to let you pass. God, I want deliverance from my tired. I want you, God, to, to remove all that so that you can fill me with the power and the anointing. I thank God that, that a day of prayer was called. I thank God that, that people understand that when everything else seems to be failing, we can pray. Our problem is too many times we try everything physical that we know how to do to get the result and finally when all of it fails, then we go to God. But I believe that God is able I was praying the early part of last week and God began to deal with me on a message. 
Let's get to preach it today. Yes, sir. I've had some of you call what we have in church. As long as there's life in my body, Amen. you will have church.
to the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in the firmament of His power. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with a sultry and heart. Praise Him with a temple and dance.
was that? I said, so that his word Prophecy. may be fulfilled. Amen. So he said that man, no man to see. No man. It would do a lot of you good. It would do our world good. It would oh, shut the media off. Yes. Amen. Amen. The media is full of nothing but a fear moment. They feed off of it. The Bible says perfect love casts out
may not believe this. If you don't, I don't care because it happened. I just laid my hand on the dash and I said, Lord, don't let my truck be set up. I asked it in Jesus' name. of the roof of their house. But what is the purpose 
of the door.
The child entered into the death of the Lamb. Sure did. And the death angel saw the price had been paid. Had to leave. One destroyed the Egyptians and broke the power of the kingdom. Actually saved the Israelites. Was their savior. The blood of every firstborn, Pharaoh's firstborn, when he walked in God. and saw the blood and saw the child dead. Scripture says there was a wailing that went throughout Israel or throughout Egypt. Right. Egypt began to scream. People weeping and crying. Right. I can see Pharaoh when he walked in on his balcony and everything was quiet in Goshen. I believe Brother Chris the first time in his life he wished he was an Israelite. For the first time. Because God's blood protected him. Was there. Amen. We have to understand in 1 Peter 3, 20, 21 it says when sometimes we're disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing were in view that he is souls were saved yeah. by water. The very thing that saved Noah and his family was the very thing that destroyed the world. Come on. Come on. What destroyed also saved. Amen. Verse 21 says, The life here you were unto me in baptism does also now save us. Amen. Why? Because the blood is applied yeah. Yeah. in the water.
Exodus 12 and 22, he says, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike it, the lintel and the two side posts, which the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at that door of the house until the morning, because that night the death angel was coming. People ask all the time, how you doing? I said, I woke up. I'm doing good. My daddy always said, any day on free grass is a great day. It's when you have to go to the Lord that it's not so good. But I'm young, preacher. I'm young.
number 13 in that closing. And the blood wow. shall be to you yeah. for a token yes. okay. upon the house yeah. where you are. Yeah. The word of God, Paul said in Corinthians, know ye not that your body is the temple yeah. of God. Brother Chris, when I'm driving down the road, it's a temple. I'm covered. Yeah. It's covered.
That's why we have to plead the blood over our minds. Yes. Yes. Well, use me to say what a thousand times I plead the blood. And I thank the Lord. I was a blood. And their buggies were running over. Somebody had two buggies. I said, Bye. 